getting active. Yeah! Coming up on this winning edition of Titans All Access. The Titans even their record after a divisional W against the Colts. And Titans GM John Robinson is here to review the victory. Danico Autry shows out against his former team. And Coach Mack is here to break it down. Plus, Chig Aconquo gets his first NFL touchdown and is here to talk about the adversity he's had to overcome. All of that and plenty more as Titans All Access starts now. Derrick Henry, the stiff arm, throws a man down. Get you some, Jig Akakwo. Touchdown, Titans! Jeffrey Simmons, touchdown, Titans! How about a little picker roll? Intercepted by the Titans. Throws ball up there, intercepted, fired. Success in this world sucks if you don't have somebody to share with. Yes, sir. We got a bunch of dudes to share this with, man. Because you guys are going to fight. You don't mind taking a punch, and you're going to come back swinging. You guys fight your asses off, and you do it together. 7,000 career rushing yards, man. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm, I tell you this all the time, man. I'm proud to be your coach. Okay, I, I'm proud as hell to be your coach, watch you guys compete. Okay, we got to do the little things, just like that game. Yes, we got to hammer the ball out, tip a pass, catch it, fall yeah, forward, sorry. finish yeah, on a pass. Yeah, but whatever it is, we got to do the little things to win. Okay, but we're going to celebrate this win. We got our heads above water, and we're taking off. Right? Let's go! Yeah. Hey, hey, look, hey, look, y'all, hey, enjoy this win, but stay hungry. Yeah. Stay hungry. Yeah. We ain't satisfied. Stay hungry, man. Hey, family on three. One, two, three. Hey. From the Bet MGM studio, welcome to Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. Glad you're here after a second straight Titans victory. And I think there's nothing you love more, Amy Wells, than a Mike Vrabel victory speech. You know, that's actually true. If we could have a Mike Vrabel victory speech just every day of the week, I would love that. But you know what else I love? What's that? Danico Autry having a huge game against his former team. You know, when John Robinson signed Danico Autry in 2021, I was just so happy we didn't have to play against him anymore because Quite frankly, he wore us out in both Oakland and Indianapolis. So it was really fun to watch him kind of give Indy a taste of their own medicine. He had a great performance, including a magnificent force fumble. Why don't we break it down with the coach, Dave McGinnis from Titans Radio, going to take us beneath the surface to look at Danico Autry's sensational performance in Indy. Hey guys, Coach Mack here with this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface, beginning now. Let's highlight some defensive line play today in the Titans' victory over the Colts at Lucas Oil Stadium. Let's watch Danico Autry. Colts are in 11 personnel. What we've got is a wide nine rush alignment package by the Titans. Six defensive backs in the game. David Long is the one linebacker from left to right. What we're going to see is the Colts' offensive line turns to Jeffrey Simmons. Jeffrey Simmons draws a lot of double teams. He draws turn protection here. With the turn protection, what this does, this puts their all-pro left guard, Quentin Nelson, on Danico Autry man-to-man. -man. They chip on Bud Dupree with the tackle, with the running back. So now it's Autry against Nelson, one-on-one. -on -one. Autry smokes Nelson. Watch him, watch this move where he smokes Nelson. This ends up being a strip sack. Dupree recovers. It sets up the first Titans touchdown. What an excellent job of the Tennessee Titans lining up in a wide nine alignment, drawing the turn to Big Jeff, and then getting the one-on-one -on -one situation that they wanted where Danico Autry can completely dominate Quentin Nelson. Colts are in 11 personnel, all right? They got a condensed formation in two-by-two. Two. Now what we've got in the ball game, we've got two linebackers and five DBs. Autry shows his versatility. He is now lined up on the right defensive end, aligned in a nine technique on the defensive right side. He uses a tremendous, tremendous rush technique, especially for an edge player. This is why he's so valuable to this defense. He can line up anywhere across the defensive front and make a difference. What he uses here is a two-hand swipe. Beautiful two-hand swipe set up by a little stagger move. He gets in there, pressures the quarterback immediately. He has to throw to his tween check down to the right side. Watch McCrary make a beautiful spot 
spot tackle off the field. Nice job by the defensive coaches giving different matchups across the defensive front. This two-hand swipe is not easy to do. This is a veteran pass rush move. This is now a four-man front. What I want you to watch here is the excellent pick games that the Titans' defensive front is running. On the right side, what you're going to look at here, it's an excellent right tackle stunt by Autry and Mario Edwards, perfectly executed. On the left side, it's an ET game. On the opposite side, what we've seen out of all of these shots so far is the Titans' defense doing a very nice job of mixing up where they are lining up their personnel and mixing up their pass rush techniques. Watch Autry pick the offensive left tackle, picks his shoulder, and then makes a direct line for the quarterback set up excellent watch his stutter move set up by mario edwards on the right side stutter move inside titans defense did a tremendous job all day of pressuring the quarterback Danico autry was a very very influential player in this ball game for a victory over his former team the indianapolis colts another player who made some big plays against the colts is this week's nissan insider and Chica Conquo has had to overcome some big adversity in his life. Stick around, we'll tell you more. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It's time for the Hughes and Coleman decision of the week. Mike Keith, I think you're gonna like this one. Okay. John Robinson added Joe Schobert to the practice squad last week and then elevates him to the active roster in time for the Colts game. Was that a good decision and why? Oh, there were a couple of good decisions in there. Joe Schobert is a linebacker who's been a five-year starter in this league. The last five years, he's had over 100 tackles in each season. To find a smart, talented veteran like Joe Schobert to add to the practice squad, a great thing. And then with Zach Cunningham out with injury, adding him to the active roster, he played 24 snaps. He had six tackles in the ball game, one and a half stuffs, and then the big forced fumble in the fourth quarter, which stopped an Indianapolis drive. So was it a good decision? Yes, yes, and yes. So explain something to us sure. a little bit. The whole elevation from mm -hmm. the practice squad process has changed since 2020. Explain that to us sure. a little bit. You have a standard elevations every single week, 16 players on the practice squad. You can elevate two to the active roster if you wish, making 55, and then you have to make seven players inactive to get down to 48. But it allows you to fill in the holes when you have injuries at different points. And then for three times, you can elevate the same player and he reverts to the practice squad without having to clear waivers and potentially being lost to another team. So Joe Schobert has been elevated once back on the practice squad. He can be elevated two more times. I'm so glad this is in John Robinson's brain. It doesn't have to remain in mine. Agreed. <laughs> it's very confusing. But you know what's not confusing? What? This week's Nissan Insider. Ah. Because it's you and Chiga Conquo talking about a lot of things, including a medical scare that he had a couple years oh, ago. Oh yeah, lost the 2020 season to a medical scare. And also his hometown, he's from Atlanta, GA. Look at that. Well, we're going to have that and so much more when Titans All Access returns. Welcome back to Titans All Access. The Tennessee Titans selected Chiga Conquo in the fourth round of the 2022 NFL Draft. And it was exciting for a lot of people, but especially for Chig, considering there was a time in his life where he thought he would never play football again. Mike Keith sits down with him to talk about that and a lot more. Two years ago, did you think you'd be sitting here? I did. did. You did? I did. In spite of the myocarditis and everything you were going through, you still believed? I always knew. I just kept my faith and I always knew I would come through. How scary was that? Oh, it was very scary. You know, just sitting there, just not knowing like what the, the future holds. But it's just, it really helped me back then, just keeping my faith and just keep knowing that like, just keep going, just keep going, keep believing that you're gonna get back. And then I ended up getting back and got to have, got to play my senior year with all my teammates, make a lot of great memories, um, lead that team, you know, to our first bowl game in like six years. So yeah, that year was very special for me. What's the most important thing you learned from that experience? The most important thing I learned from that is don't take don't take life for granted. Cause it was like having that happen, just everything was taken away like in the in the moment like that. And it, when I got back, I, every single day I lived was like I want to live this day fully because I don't know if it'll be the last time I'm playing football. 
Cause I remember when it happened, I would, I would think back, I was like, wow, what if the last time I put those pads on was the last time I put those pads on? So for me, it was just don't take nothing for granted. Make, live every day to the fullest and make every moment count. Why did you come back actually a better football player? I felt like I had to catch up. If I had to catch up, I had a lot of stuff to do. You know, I lost a whole entire year. You know, that's a lot. Of, that's a whole entire year of film. So for me, it was just like catch up. I took I, everything. That's when I started taking everything extremely serious, like film, practice, the way I worked out, the way I took care of my body, all those things. I took it extremely serious, just knowing like, because you can be in great health. I was in 100% great health. I was, you know, young, 20 year old, complete great health, and out of nowhere, I got myocarditis. Is it more fun now? It is more, it is more fun now. It is more fun now. From the standpoint that you think back to when you were seven and you think about what you went through and now, is it that same feeling? Do you feel that again? Do you recapture that in a way? Yeah, that's, that's honestly what I was talking to my family about. It feels like, it feels like when I first started playing football again. It's like, when I first started playing football, that was probably the most fun I've ever had in my life. And then, you know, when you're going through all the stress of, you know, high school, you're worrying about getting offers in college, you're worrying about getting to the NFL. But now that I'm here, it's like I feel like a kid again. Like I get to really enjoy football for what it is, which is just football. Okay, we're going to Tennessee, guys. We're only two hours away from home. What are Titans fans going to see? when they see you on the field? Oh, they're gonna see a lot of energy. A lot of energy, a lot of fun. I'm always gonna be smiling. Oh, they're gonna see a lot of energy. They're gonna see a hard worker, super tough guy. You know, I'm not good. When I get the ball, I don't wanna go down. I wanna punish people. So they're gonna, I feel like we're gonna have a lot of fun together. And did you know Malik Willis in high school? Yeah, I did. Yeah, he went, he, so he was really close. He went to Roswell. He, we played in the same classification. We actually played his, uh, his team uh, in the playoffs one year. And yeah, so I remember him from back then. I remember they went to a state championship against Grayson. I remember that's when I really started taking notice of him. I was like, oh, this guy's really good. Why did you feel like the Titans were a great spot for you? It's so close to home for me. And then it's like the fan base was, was awesome. When, like, when, when I um, got drafted, they were just awesome. The way they like, reached out and like, they were just congratulating me and just welcoming me in. So that and so close to home. And honestly, the role I can, I can play on this team, I feel like that's also a big thing. I feel like I can, I can help this team a lot with the role that I'm bringing to the offense. Yes, sir, tighten up, tighten up. Yes. Tighten up. Now here's something you might have missed during Sunday's game against the Colts. Chigakonkwo and eight of his fellow teammates had international flags on their helmets as part of a league-wide initiative to show support for each player's cultural heritage. Okonkwo's mother immigrated from Nigeria, so his helmet had both the American and Nigerian flags on it. The initiative will last through this weekend's games, so keep an eye out for that. Now we're gonna take break, but when we come back, Mike Keith is talking ball with John Robinson. Stick around. Time to talk ball with John Robinson, presented by Duncan. If you're watching our last segment, you saw I had a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with Chigga Kakwo, and he obviously is coming off a great game in Indianapolis with the three catches for 38 yards and a touchdown. John, when you drafted Chig out of Maryland, what stood out about his performance that made you want him to become a Titan? Well, I think it was his versatility. You know, they used him in a lot of different uh, areas offensively. He played on the end of the line of scrimmage. He played detached in the slot. He played wing. He played fullback. He was athletic. You could see his speed, his fluidity in route. He was good with the ball in his hands after the catch and was competitive as a blocker. So just a lot of different roles uh, that he played there for Maryland. And, you know, he's improved on those here. Speaking of good with the ball in his hands, what about Tier Tart? That was some kind of interception he made in Indianapolis. Yeah, um, big play for us uh, defensively. Uh, he was gripping it after the game tighter than a kid with a new toy Christmas, I think. But, uh, you know, that front, the, the entire front, they were disruptive all day. You know, we've gotten some versatility, moving some guys around with flexible pieces here and there. And, um, you know, Tierra continues to improve and we're gonna need that down the stretch here the rest of the season. What allowed you to get the running game going at Indianapolis in spite of the fact that the Colts were number three in the league against the run? 
Well, I thought we did a much better job of hitting our landmarks as blockers. You know, that was something that we focused on all week was was getting to the right angles, getting to the right spots on the blocks so that Derek could get going. Derek had got some speed built up. He was able to punch through the line pretty good. There were a couple runs in the second half that were, you know, we got caught up in the fray a little bit, but they were really, really close to punching through as well. Looking at the commander's offense, a lot of versatile pieces. What's the challenge of trying to defend them? Well, it's, they do. They've got a lot of pieces over there. You know, Gibson, the running back, he played down the road at Memphis. Uh, he played slot receiver there at Memphis, and they use him out of the backfield some there at Washington that way as well. Catches the ball well. He's got great high weight speed. They're really fast at receiver. You know, McLaurin's been a pro bowler. Samuel plays in the slot. He's a great catch and run player. Dotson's a first round pick out of Penn State. Really good route runner, really fast. Good with the ball in his hands as well. And then Wentz, he's big, he's athletic, he's got a big arm, he can extend plays. So they've got a lot of threats over there on the offensive side of football. All right, John, as we wrap up, you've won two in a row. What do you want to continue to improve upon as this team heads to Washington this weekend? Well, I think it's those details that we talked about last week that you know kind of came up in the second half some that we executed in the first half. It's staying on those landmarks in the run game. It's hitting some of those targets on, on the pass plays to give us a few chunk plays. Uh, defensively, it's continuing to stay stingy against the run. You know, we did a great job against Indianapolis stopping the run. We got to continue to affect the passer and not give up a handful of chunk plays down the field to allow drives to keep going. Talking ball with John Robinson, presented by Duncan every week here on Titans All Access. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Mike. John and I were together last Friday night at Floyd Stadium in Murfreesboro. A special night at Middle Tennessee State for one of their own, Kevin Byer. Check it out. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin, I am pleased to be here today. And on behalf of your alma mater, the great MTSU, yes, I have a very pleasant surprise for you. In recognition of this incredible career that you have had, both at MTSU and at the Titans so far, and your sustained excellence, and I really want to emphasize sustained excellence as a player and as a role model, I am happy as the university president to announce that your MTSU number 20 will become the second number to be retired in the history of the university. So on Friday, September 30th, we want to welcome you back home for our game against the University of Texas San Antonio when we will properly celebrate this incredible honor and unveil your retired number at Floyd Stadium. What an honor, honestly, just kind of going back to those days at MTSU, honestly going back to those recruiting days when Coach Stock came into the, that gym and uh, kept it real with me. Come play ball for me at MT, and that just always stuck with me. And I always appreciated uh, the mentor, the father role that you've always played in my life. I'm almost at a loss of words, but I just want to say thank you. I'm so grateful. I know my mother would be very proud of me in this moment right now. Thank you, McPhee. Thank you, Masaro. Thank you, everybody. And uh, like I said, man, just a great honor. He was a phenomenal player for us, a phenomenal man. You, you look at his overall performance, what he did at Middle Tennessee, how he performed, uh, left with 19 career interceptions, which is a school record. He'll be the second one in the history of this school, and they've been playing football for a long time. So to be one of two jerseys that have had this honor is a tremendous recognition for, for KB. Being able to recognize him today with the retirement of his jersey, his number that it'll never be worn again, is pretty special. He, he conducts himself on the field and off the field the same way, I mean, the highest degree of professionalism. And it makes our alums proud because here's one of our best products is Kevin Byard and, and, and what he's done and how he conducts himself. And that's why we're gonna hang his number forever uh, in our stadium and, and nobody will wear number 20 again. I feel humble, man, it's great, surreal. Uh, it's finally happening, man, I'm super excited and uh, just feel blessed, man. From this moment forward, no football player in the history of the school 
will wear the jersey number 20 again. That number is officially retired in honor of Kevin Byard. Wow. I'm trying very hard right now not to get emotional. I just want to thank you guys. I see a lot of Byard jerseys. Uh, the Titan jersey looks awesome in the stands. I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming out tonight. First and foremost, have to thank the most high. Have to thank God, because without him, none of this is possible. I mean, you have no idea what this means to myself, to my family. You know, we've been through a lot this past year. You know, a lot of people know that my mom passed away earlier this summer. I think I can come up here and celebrate this moment with me. Thank you to the Blue Raider fans. I mean, you guys are awesome. You've supported me throughout everything, through all my ups and downs, throughout my entire career in the middle of the season. It's really hard uh, to not get emotional, but um, and thank you again so much. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio. Titans at Washington this weekend. We've got your Titans All Access game ticket for Sunday's contest, Amy. Oh, we absolutely do. The Titans are taking on the Commanders, and they are entering week five with a one and three record after losing to the Dallas Cowboys 25 to 10. They are led by quarterback Carson Wentz, who has thrown for 1,031 yards and has eight touchdowns. He has been sacked 17 times. On defense, linebacker Jamin Davis has tallied 18 tackles, three sacks, and two tackles for loss. It'll be a challenge against that defense. Ron Rivera always has good defenses. Titans and the Commanders from FedEx Field on Sunday. This lady and Rhett Bryan with Titans Countdown at 11 a.m. Central. We'll kick it off at 12.02 Central. The Titans trying to win their third straight. Let's go get them into the bye. How about that? Woohoo! Tighten up, everybody. <laughs> for Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. We appreciate you joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.